The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying, and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. You are now entering the all-consuming realm of Shay's Paranormal Chat, where the things that are better left unsaid are actually said. Shut up and sit down. You're listening to Shay's Paranormal Chat. Paranormal podcasting done Shay's way. Tons of fun. Dude, seriously? A bit sarcastic. Hashtag investigator, not hunter. But always real. Hashtag data, not evidence. Don't get your panties in a twist. Oh my god, really? This is real, raw conversation. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome, TGIF, and happy Good Friday to everybody. Um, Tonight, we're very lucky. We have James and Nito with us. And of course, Miss Kelly. Hello. So, how are you guys hello, doing? Hello, hello. Doing good, you? Doing good. Getting excited. Um, so, I was already getting messages up the yin yang um, <laughs> about you, <laughs> about like questions and I'm like why don't you ask in chat but then yeah. some of the questions I'm like I'm glad you didn't ask them in chat oh saucy ones huh it just odd 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 questions well if he's a priest how come he has a son um because he's not a priest oh right. but he's a demonologist doesn't but, mean he's a priest <laughs> so I think it should yeah I think maybe we should address that first on what a demonologist is and go from there. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that right into the fire. Right, um, I, I have so many questions. We're not gonna. We're just gonna go for it. I love it. So a demonologist is basically somebody that studies demons, folklores, uh, anything that uh, surrounds uh, the stratosphere of demons, anything that has to involve with it, the occult. Um, that's what demonology is. It's the study of that through literature, through a mentorship, whatever. Uh, um, but that's what a demonologist is. There is field work capabilities of a demonologist, and that would be more so like being the mediator. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we lost uh, we lost Lorraine Warren today, but her husband Ed Warren was a demonologist and was that mediator between the investigation group and the church. So that's what a demonologist is. So basically, I come in, a group gets me involved, or maybe somebody reaches out to me, and I scope it out and. If they believe it's a demon, they call me in. If they believe it's negative, they call me in. And, you know, I assess it. And I do what I have to do. I do my all my qualifications. I do... Oh, I dropped, I dropped myself. But I, I do... <laughs> I, I do... I do... Uh, I do a lot of uh, preliminary things. And, you know, I, I check and, you know, I get primary care physicians involved. I get psychologists involved if, if this talks about possession and stuff like that. So that's what a demonologist is um, in, in, a field capa- in a field capacity. Um, you don't always have to do the field work aspect of it. There's many people that just study it and are really very, very knowledgeable within the literature aspect of it. But have never actually uh, been a mediator for a case. Um, so that's basically what I do. And as, as, as far as 
as being a deacon with the Catholic Church, um, I still get the Catholic Church involved because guess what? I'm only a deacon. I can't do exorcisms. Um, you know, I can do a house cleansing. You know, so if if that is what the uh, client wants that I'm dealing with, either a homeowner, or business owner, or somebody, um, you know, I can do a cleansing for them, and of course, you know, bless any any items for them, and um, bless holy water as well. So, you know, I can do those things and keep them at ease, and maybe even the cleansing will uh, will work for them. Um, but if not, of course, there's, if there's oppression, possession, then I definitely get the church involved. So you can you can do all the cleansing, and I know you and I, I I've asked you this before, um, but so everybody in chat knows um, demonologists do not do exorcisms. No, the, if you if you hear a demonologist claiming they are uh, an exorcist, they fourth first and fourth most. Um, the problem is everybody wants to be an exorcist. Everybody talks about exorcisms. A demonologist is not an exorcist. Exorcists are very well versed in demonology, and there's that's the difference. Um, plus, an exorcist, plus a priest that is an exorcist will not call themselves an exorcist before they call so- themselves a priest. You know, people people think that you know um, becoming clergy. Uh, especially in the paranormal world or in the in the exorcism world, uh, everybody thinks that's that's the goal uh, of being a priest. You know, if if that is your goal as a priest to be an exorcist, then then you have the wrong goals. You shouldn't be a priest. There's so many other things that are incorporated or incorporated with me in clergy. You know, so I I am going to be an exorcist one day. You know, my mentor is an exorcist. You know, I am a deacon that will one day. You know. Uh, Jo- uh, join priesthood um, and and enter uh, and study in, uh, exorcisms and le- go that route. But that's not why I did uh, why did I did what I did. Uh, why I became clergy. There's so many other reasons, um, you know. So no, not no, no demonologist is an exorcist. An exorcist can be a demonologist, right? You know, and that's it. Isn't that because? Um is it last rites or just the human blessing? What is it at the end of the exorcist, the exorcism? Well, so there's, there's the sacraments within the Catholic That's church, it, the sacraments. You. So yes. I can, I can only perform matrimony and baptism. Um, I received holy orders, which is also a sacrament, which is only can, can only be given done or done by bishops, um, of way of hands, you know, get, receive holy orders, um, so, you know, I received a sacrament, but I can only do two. So at, after I enter exorcism, sometimes even before, most of the, most of the time at the end, um, you will, you will enact in communion, you know, you will take the Eucharist. Um, and a priest is the only one that are, is able to, to do that sacrament of communion. So they, they're the only people that are able to, um, allow that transubstantiation, you know, they, they, that blessing that they do, um, uh, works for God through them uh, because they receive those abilities and they understand what's the process. It's not because everybody wants to say, "Oh, anybody can do it." No, there's a process to do it and doing it. You know, there's they, they they're very well versed in those processes. So, but that's why an uh, an exorcism would be done by a priest, especially if it's the solemn rite. You know, the minor a minor rite of exorcism still should be done by a priest, but that is basically a very uh, uh, very strong. Uh, house blessing. It's usually done on infestations, demonic infestations. Um, that's when a uh, minor a rite of exorcism would be done. But yeah, the solemn rite, you know, uh, communion is done afterwards. So that's only, like I said, le- left up to a priest because they are able to do that sacrament. Okay. I'm going to give a couple uh, shout outs here to those who have already joined us in chat. And we already have a question <laughs> in the chat. So. And if you're not listening, I mean, if you're listening but not in chat, you guys should come in and say hi. Um, of course, we have Mama Pat. We have Wolf Adam. We have Eye of the Beholder. We have Matt. We have Kim Purvis and a few other people. But unless they say hello, I learned not to say their names. Um, so Mama Pat would like. Mama Pat is Kelly's mother, and everybody calls her Mama Pat. So <laughs> Mama Pat. Mama Pat, yeah, awesome woman, awesome woman. Um, she would like you to explain. I, I was going to ask this. It's very, I think it's a very important 
question too, so I'm glad she brought it up. Can you explain the difference between an exorcism and a cleansing? Because it seems like seems like some think it's the same thing. Well, in any many ways, the process of a cleansing and exorcism is very similar. If we're talking about a minor rite of exorcism, uh, like I said, it's just basically different prayers said. But the, uh, almost kind of the same ritual done, you know, the, the salts, the uh, the holy water, the anointing oil, um, that same kind of process. But there's different prayers said, um, different intentions with it, with involved of the minor rite of exorcism. You know, cleansing would be done on something like an earthbound spirit um, that is very negative, you know, maybe to help them cross over if they need help, uh, you know, cle- cleanse a space of any negative energy um now a demonic infestation you know you're dealing with pure evil that's what a demon is is pure evil so now you just you now minor rite of exorcism is just like i said more uh stronger prayers different things said but in the same concept almost the same thing now a solemn rite which is done over possessed people or oppressed obsessed people um which there's a difference yeah, there's, there's difference, but um, an act, uh, solemn rite of exorcism um, is very. It's it, it, it's a long process. You know, sometimes it could be done in one shot. Sometimes it could be done multiple times, and that can also be done for a cleansing as well. Um, but the, the 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 solemn rite of exorcism is done over a person. Um, a cleansing can technically be done done over a per, uh, person, but I call cleansings. Uh, I do. I, I say cleansings over houses. Um, you know, in in my sense, and as a Catholic and or a Christian, um, I'm saying prayers over somebody, and that's not an exorcism. That would be a deliverance. It'd be delivering something from that person um, that is either attached to them or has some influence within them that maybe is demonic or maybe even negative. Um, but a prayer over somebody would be a deliverance um, in, in that capacity. So the difference between uh, oppression and possession, possession is when it is either already has or working on fully taking you over. And an oppression is more of um, attached and can influence you, but it hasn't taken over. Is that simply put? Like, well, well, the the best way to say it is infestation. It was just, just three stages, but these three stages, a lot of people don't talk about the sub stages. Like in in the oppression stage, they could also be up the obsession stage. You know, some people aren't oppressed, but they're obsessed. They that they, they, they want it. Um, oppressed, they're more scared. They don't want what's going on. Uh, things are changing. Obsessed, a lot of people don't talk about it, but in possession, there's, you know, perfect possession or transient possession. The entity comes and go. The perfect possession, the entity stays dormant there. Like, doesn't stay dormant, but it stays active. The person doesn't uh, gain control of themselves. They are in a perfect state of possession. Uh, now, oppression and possession, what's different with them is basically the easiest way to say it is infestation, basically the demonic inf- infest um, tries to find their target. Once they find their target, either the weakest or strongest person, there's, there's so many different um, things that you can acquaint to why a demonic entity chooses somebody. There's not one specific thing, but um, sometimes the strongest connection to God is also the biggest target. You know, the, the closer you get to God, the toughest life, t- tougher life gets. You know, it's a true saying, um, and I believe in that. So, but oppression um, basically is um, at the point where that person is targeted is basically the deconstruction of their free will, them trying to break them down and trying to make them a shell of themselves. And when there is enough of that uh, within that stature of oppression. Um, that person is going to, uh, at one point uh, in, in, in their time, hopefully it doesn't happen, of course, but in, in, in speculation and, of course, talking about the differences or and how it leads to it, um, person, basically that person would uh, eventually give up and say, I can't do this anymore. And that is invocation for the, uh, the demonic to possess the individual because their free will has been shattered uh, to the extent where... Um, that demonic entity is now able to control them mm-hmm. um, and where you would have the transient possession once that stage happens happens 
that possessed individual doesn't have it hasn't fully lost themselves. So in that transient stage, uh, or, or in most cases when it's transient possession, and that's most possessions um, that, that occur, is that the person is fighting back, so the entity keeps coming and going because that person regains their free will and fights and pushes it away and uh, strengthens their connection to God. And then when the entity comes in, it's that entity overpowering the human. Um, now, perfect possession, which is a hell of a lot rare. Um, there's a lot less cases of it known uh, out there. But in perfect possession, um, and is basically that person never gains uh, the ability, their free will is fully, fully uh, d- destroyed, uh, disassembled, and that entity has full control of that person. And if somehow... <coughs> You know the 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 entity ever left that person, then most likely would die. They would be they would be in a vegetable state in in technicality. Wow. Wow. Never thought of it that way. Yeah, it's all about free will. A lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, it it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kelly, you have any questions yet? So, how often do you how often do you get called into cases because someone says, "I have a demon," that you have to go in and explain to them that's not a demon; it's just an asshole. Uh, all the time, uh, it's it's even more difficult when uh, you know. And I don't want to throw anybody in the bus. I'm very uh, very easygoing person. It, it took a long time for that, but. You know, a lot of the times, actually, it's uh, it's a it's a team that brings me in, and they're the ones that were claiming it's demonic, and they told the client it's demonic, and and it's really not at the end of the day, you know, and it it really does make a mess. Um, I try never to use that word. I think I've ever used that word a handful, even less than a handful of times, uh, in in direction towards a client. But you never, it's it's not a word that you ever really want to tell somebody because you really. If, if really, if you are there to help somebody, it is your job to empower them, not kind of uh, uh, empower uh, them with the truth, not coddle them. Right. Yes. Yeah, well, not empower them with. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever say to the client that they were dealing with demon. So uh, yeah, technically, I, I would mean, be if lying. they weren't dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But even if they were, even if they were, I, I, I even if they were, I want it. You know, because yeah, uh, truth is good, but. In that aspect, if you tell, oh, yeah, you're dealing with a demon, a lot of people's minds start racing. Why am I dealing with this? You know, uh, did I sin? What did I do wrong? And then they start they start kind of breaking themselves down, and that's the worst place they can be in that yeah, kind of doubt stuff. doubt a demon or even yeah. a negative entity can feed off of that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. So even if there's something there, you know, you don't want that mentality. So, But, yeah, all the time. Uh, I, 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 I go by a statistic. Um, that I can only go by because this is my firsthand experiences. I've done this for 15 years, uh, involved in the paranormal and 400 something, how something ridiculous, right? Like that. But I've done a lot of cases. I was busy for a long time and I would say anywhere from five to seven cases, five, definitely two other cases. That I still question to this day. Five cases of demonic activity in 15 years. See, and I think that's so important to stress that to people because in today's world and today's TV, everybody's <laughs> being made to believe that it's all demons, you know? And yeah. so it's it's tough when we do what we do because everybody's like, oh, I've got a demon, I've got a demon. It's like, no, you just have icky energy in your house. Well, sometimes they don't even have that. Sometimes it's nothing and they're claiming it's demon. I've or they're it. just scared. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's not always faked on purpose, but it's as yeah. faked on accident, as I say. <laughs> you have nothing in your house. You have expanding duct work. Yeah. That does happen. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. Um, we have a couple more questions. Um, and I'm trying to keep up on them, too. Um I'm, I'm slacking on my job. Do you want to go to Darren's? Um, yeah. And yes, Darren came in. Cynthia came in. And I'm forgetting somebody else, but let's go to Darren. First, I'm going to... Darren asked a question, but I'm going to ask this one first. Have you ever a witnessed precursor. an exorcism? Yeah. 
No, 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 okay. I have not. Um, All right. His question uh, was, have you ever witnessed a death due to an exorcism? But I didn't think you had ever even witnessed a exorcism. A real exorcism, yeah. No, I have not. I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've witnessed, uh, I've, I've performed and I've been involved in deliverances. Um, but usually most of the time, because um, at that point I was in clergy, um, a lot of times that I work with the, uh, the church instead of being a part of the church. Um, usually family and uh, uh, a fellow minister that, that exorcist trust or uh, their team uh, are involved with that exorcism. Um, you know, being an outsider, most even though that you know they respect me and they understand my experiences, most of the times um, I have ever have had to bring somebody in. I let I just let them take over. I I I think sometimes that's the best thing, you know. Uh, you do just your part pull, and then pop, do my part, pull back and let them do yep. their part. Yep. If I was if I was meant to witness it, you know, uh, I, uh, I would witness it, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've I, I've, invo- I've 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 been involved with possessed people. I've I, I've I've handled them like I've done prayer over them just to help help them kind of like come back but no i've never i've never but but even possessed individuals dealing with them it's very shocking very scary oh i'm sure i when Uh, i um i've never there goes the door sorry um (laughs) caught me it's the wind shay it's the wind (laughs) it's a demon god darn it (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying not to take the Lord's name in vain, but you know I'm going to screw up, James. You know that, right? Yeah, it's Holy Week, too. You, you totally I messed know, it up. I it's Good Friday. I, I, I do swear, but I've been doing really good about it. It's usually uh, the F-bomb. It's, I swear yeah, like well, the Seattle. I, it's, oh, it's, I, I know. Swear, yeah. It's all right. I broke I the one first, so sorry about that. <laughs> no, I... Of all guests, I wasn't worried about that with you, but I've been trying to do better on the show. Um... Mm-hmm. She's getting more and more boring as she goes. Oh, I mean, um, <laughs> um, all right. One more question me. <laughs> so far from Mama Pat again. And, um, do you want me to do it? Yeah, if you can find it. I got it. All right. So, um, Mama Pat was raised Catholic, and she says, My understanding of a demon is an entity that never was human whose purpose is to cause a person to renounce goodness, grace, God, and instead embrace evil, the devil, etc. Is that even close to what a demon is? It's not just a negative spirit, right? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, so the one thing I try to tell people and try to instill in people, yes, I'm Catholic, and I, I believe in God, and I believe what is interpreted into into some aspect of course there's there's interpretations out there that are meant for you to take uh you know if you are catholic and especially you've gone through seminary you've heard of the summa which is by saint thomas aquinas which is pretty much like a question answering to everything within god and uh, involving that including angels and demons so you know a lot a lot of questioning yourself to understanding yourself kind of thing um Nobody knows really what a demon is. We're human, you know. We there's there's been literature passed upon it. You know, I've experienced it. But the one thing I can say that I hundred hundred percent believe in is, uh, you know, demons. Can, you could say they were their fallen angels and they fell with uh, a Satan when you know, or Lucifer when you know they fell from heaven and betrayed God. Uh, and that's what a demon is. But the one thing I can say, what I know what a demon is, is that I think that has been passed down in literature, is in the Bible, is that they are uh, bodiless creatures. They are uh, uh, pure energy uh, forms, uh, pure energy spirits. Um, not, you want non-human. For the, they're not human. For, for non-human. us little people, non-human. Yeah, they're non-human. <laughs> they, never, they were never created with a body. Um, and so that's why if you look at a lot of demonic hauntings, um, why they are able to appear as so many different things and trick people and are, are very theatrical when it comes to their haunting sometimes. It's be- and why it is, you know, they have that interpretation of the, you know, horns and the wings, but <coughs> they, I, I like to say the best, the best interpretation of what for people in modern day understand pop culture is the movie it. The clown is it, technically it's an interdimensional being. Um, 
So, uh, you know, and it plays on all your fears. That's basically what a demon does. There, it is pure evil. It plays on your fears. It'll, it'll, it'll work you. It'll uh, manipulate you. Um, so that's the closest thing I can say what it is. As far as you know, uh, anything else, I really can't. You know, that to me, it is pure evil. I've never experienced an, anything similar like that in life, um, and it's mind blowing. But yeah, I, I, I definitely do believe they are. Uh, in uh, non-human entities, pure pure spirit forms. Yeah, I think they can appear whatever they want as. Um, so that's a good question. Is that- <coughs> All right. How do you do? I'm trying to word this nicely because of who you are. Um, <laughs> Are you often called in to clean in, clean up other people's messes of stuff that they've maybe not even intentionally, but investigators do some investigators do stupid things and create more problems. And do you ever have to go in and clean up those messes? Like when it gets out of control, because I see a lot of people out there online doing stupid stuff. And I always wonder who's going to fix this when they leave. Um, Sometimes, you know, I, 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 I've been called in a lot of times after people have handled cases, but I've also had a lot of cases of mine um, get handled after me as well. And that really depends on the client, you know. Uh, <laughs> it really depends on who you're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 de- I definitely had to, uh, to get involved in some situations that were handled roughly and uh, inappropriately. But the, the biggest thing is, you know, I try to say to people out there is, you know, paranormal, I'm, you know, <laughs> I, I work construction for a living. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a licensed sheet metal mechanic. You know, I install ductwork. I'm licensed. You know, I can do it. Uh, if, you, if you wanted to hire me and you wanted to pull a permit or I could pull a permit, go, we could do so. You know, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm licensed in something or, you know, I have a license in something. <laughs> and I can drive. I have a license to drive. There's no licenses uh, to be a paranormal investigator. You know, I think the only thing that's very close to that has some respect to the demonology thing is that I'm a deacon with the Catholic Church. But at, at the end of the day, if there's your demonologist who calls himself a demonologist or a paranormal investigator, that is a paranormal, uh, call yourself a paranormal investigator, it's a self titled thing. And there's no licensing. There's nothing like that within that. You know, when I get involved, it's as a religious counselor. You know, I can counsel people on a religious aspect because of me being clergy. And me before being Catholic, I was an ordained minister with the Church of Christ. So I was, I've was. i been able to do that in that kind of stanza. So, But there's a lot of people that think going into people's houses is radical and cool and they're going to catch cool stuff. But then I'll also understand, once you walk into somebody's house, there's so many different things uh, that could occur. Uh, liability issues, you know, you're saying something to the family, you're doing something stupid, uh, and the activity spike because you either pro- pro- provoking or um, you, you're not giving any respect. Um, so there's so many different things. So when you have random people that, you know, that have devices that go in people's houses, it is, it's always scary. There's always going to be a chance of you having to go fix people's mistakes. But I made many mistakes as well. So I can't really yell at them. But yeah, I've had to go into a lot of locations. I uh, think making uh, houses mistakes and- on accident is different than some of the <laughs> What I was probably thinking... And I probably well, a lot of it is by accident. A lot of it is by accident. Yeah. A lot of those people that go into people's houses and make things worse, they think they're doing. They think they're doing the right thing, yeah. um, and that that's because a lack of understanding of what we're doing. But there are some total idiots out there, and mind you, for the people that are idiots, I'm sorry. Um, but the thing uh, about being an idiot is they usually don't know they're an idiot, so yeah. you're probably yeah. not insulting them any because they yeah. don't think you're well, amen to that one. But that's what I'm saying, though, is that, you know, there's people out there that just, like, um, 
that just make things worse or 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 leech off people like uh the, throughout time of, of me being involved in this and you know i i've sit, i'm sitting down with john i'm sitting with, down with other fellow demonologists who are well respected and we talk about the people that have milked people like back in the day there was the demon doctors they used to be perform uh phone exorcisms and they charge you thousands of dollars i've never heard that and people used wow. to pay thousands of dollars um you know i dealt with a client um, who still, you know, doesn't listen, but um, is still dealing with people that I know and well, well respect. Um, but they, they, somebody charged, somebody charged, she, well, she, she paid up to $30,000 for help because she was dealing with something. $30,000. Oh and I don't charge gosh. a dime. You know, I don't charge a dime. But those are the things that you have to come up and clean sometimes. And sometimes you can't clean them up because they're so messed up that you can't do anything about it, you know? That is horrible. Uh, uh, Somebody to prey upon somebody at their weakest like that Mm -hmm. is horrible. It's terrible. It pisses me off. It really does. (coughs) We're taking turns coughing. Um. Uh, I just yeah, don't I got understand. A, I got a gnarly how- cough. Uh. Yeah, and I get where somebody could get suckered into paying like a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks even, but thirty thousand dollars. How do you get suckered into that? And yeah. how do you have that much spare money if you're no smarter than to give it away? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, that was mean. Well, yeah. The, well, the, the, when you sometimes in your darkest, deepest moments, and you have somebody that can, uh, I guess. Uh, be very charming and charismatic charismatic and say they can help you and i think there's people that you know at their weakest point are willing to shell out what they do want. anything you know phone exorcisms who the hell thinks that's gonna work <laughs> you know like but there's people that do and there's you know there's people that still do it you know the demon doctors are no longer around because they they were they, they yeah they were they were chased out and dodged but People still pay, willing to pay for stupid crap like that, you know? It's 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 mind boggling, but I think there's also less of a voice. You know, there's people that talk about how it's nonsense and stuff like that, but there's not enough people talking about it where there's enough change to it. You know, we, you you can talk about it, but for there to be change, it's 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 tough, especially in this kind of field. I you know, I wish I wish the people that charge for that stuff would go to jail. I wish that there would be more court cases. Uh, of of these people um, either getting a felony or a misdemeanor because of the stupid crap, you know, but unfortunately there's not many cases out there that, that have occurred. So yeah, in most there's, cases they would have to promise or guarantee um, yeah. something for it to be considered fraud. Yep. Um, hi Luna. Somebody just asked a question, but it disappeared. So they must've deleted it. I saw it. that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Maybe I think it was Cynthia. She might be retyping. How do you feel? I kind of, I know the answer to this already. I heard your little spiel in uh, uh, Manchester there, and I've heard you say it before. But how do you feel about provoking? And what would you suggest paranormal investigators do when they find themselves out in group situations where provoking is happening to the point where? Well, actually, I don't believe in provoking at all. But how how do you handle? I I hear it a lot. You don't believe in provoking, right? Uh, well, I religious provocate. Well, religious provocation is in this more, in more extreme circumstances, and you're using uh, the power of God, the God, name of God, name of Jesus, and using it forcefully for uh, that evil presence to to suppress itself. Um, or a show itself or be suppressed. Um, but no, I don't provocate. Uh, back when I was younger, uh, th- I did provocate. And, you know, I learned, um, and this is, of course, growing up and making mistakes. But at one point in my life, I did uh, provocate and try to, try to get things to, to, to talk to me. Um, but not anymore. No, I, I don't like it. I think it's, you know, I think growing up and getting older, I, I, you know, I really understand and respect and, you know, I, I, I respect anything. Even if you disrespect me, I still respect you because I don't care 
Uh, you know, I don't need no bad blood. So it's the same concept. If these things are intelligent, we deal with these things that are intelligent. I'm going to give them the same respect. Um, and if they res- if they disrespect me, uh, then I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave for you know. Uh, of course, uh, uh, say you know. I'll, I'll stand my ground and say you can't do this kind of stuff, and I'll be very respectful in in, in my standing on my ground. But no, I don't believe it. If I. I, I've 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 led events uh, in public investigations um, where somebody uh, was trying to provocate and they were automatically thrown off the presence uh, pro- the place um, location because um, it's something that said you know I I I feel like provocating not can only lead harm to yourself but can lead harm to many other people involved in the situation and when the and when there's that possibility. There should be no possibilities of it. Um, it's dangerous, you know. Why? And why disrespectful. Talk, why talks? Mm-hmm. Not, well, I don't get it. Why talks? And I, I learned this uh, uh, because of my, uh, you know, firsthand. But why disrespect something that you can't see? You know, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Like, you know, if you say, if you go up to somebody and you provocate somebody, you, you know, say something in somebody's face, you might get punched. Yeah. There's that definite, definite, definitely that you might get punched. But when there's something unseen and, and you're, you're provocating, you don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, be very cautious of that. Like, you know, I can't tell people not to do it because anytime you say not to do something, people are going to do it. Uh, it's that, you know, th- th- that drive. Um, but, you know, I don't do it. And I think other people shouldn't do it. But I guess it's, you know, as long if you do it and if you're by yourself, you do it, you by yourself. But d- definitely. What about what about when if they do it when they're by themselves and they leave and somebody else comes? Yeah, but, but what do you what, what what can you do? Like you could speak out about it, but you can't that, yeah. you, you can't. You can't know, tell but, anybody not to. I just, yeah. I just <laughs> you can more. apologize for them. I mean, yeah. if someone's being nasty to a spirit, speak up and say, I apologize for their behavior, just like well, you would if somebody was mouthing off to another human being. Well, in a group situation, yeah, definitely. I think, well, I think once that person's removed, I definitely think you try to, I think you try to uh, dissimilar the situation. You know, I think you try to, you know, definitely ease it. You try to talk to them respectfully, or you might even all just clear out and let it kind of simmer itself and then go back and with, you know, more of a uh, positive attitude after getting rid of that negative person, you know, there's many d- different ways to diffuse the situation, but no, I definitely don't believe in it, uh, especially in a public situation. Mm-hmm. Cynthia retyped your question, and you touched base on it a little bit, but um, I think that's before she came in. Um, how can you make sure to find a true demonologist, not someone who may have just read a book or two and now say they're a demonologist? Well, I, I still get that all the time. Everybody's still, you know, whatever, but... You know, some people still still doubt me or whatever they want to do about me. But I think the best way it, uh, to find a true demonologist is find well, very well respected paranormal people. There's very there are people out there that are very well respected, um, and there's very well respected people in the demonology field as well. Ask them. You know, if you're not. If you're if you're not into the field, the same thing that you can do in, in some ways um, when finding a doctor, or an electrician, or something like that, you know, check check them out, background check them. You know, uh, this, 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 it surprises me on how many people that just random strangers into their house and don't do any research on them. But you know, definitely do research on the person. Look who they're acquainted to, um, you know, reach out to the, some of the people they're acquainted to and get see if that person that you're going to bring in or claiming themselves to be a demonologist is what they are or, or have some has some sort of knowledge of that. And maybe they can find somebody that can help you. So th- there's different ways. You just have to, sometimes you just have to research. Um, and I know when people are involved in the situation and are just very and this is where the money thing happens where people, you know, get charged, but 
you know, people are in a rush to find help. Um, but sometimes we're desperate you, to desperate. Out yeah. So many times they're just like, I'll take whatever yeah. I can get. But yeah, definitely do your research. I think that's how you found, find somebody that is well, legitimate. Um, but really the best way to do it. And I tell people to do this all the time. And sometimes they're oh, they won't help me. You got to keep trying is contact the church. If you're not a Christian, then contact somebody that is like, like minded like you and, and your belief. But if you're Christian, just call the Catholic Church, and they might one diocese might not help you, but another one you you have to call around sometimes. But you also have to go through their process. They have a process for a reason, and if you're not willing to go through their process, they're not willing to help you. You know, you can't. There's a process. I'm sorry. You know, and sometimes we can't overstep that. Yeah. Well, the Catholic is- Church. Well, and I'm trying to ask a question, and I, I, I'm trying not to ask questions that are like <coughs> offensive. I don't. I, I guess I go. Ahead, go ahead. It's uh, well. I think there's a lot of misconceptions. You know, I even though I'm Catholic, I, I believe everybody should believe in what they want. So go ahead. So, so like, if a Lutheran thinks that they have a demon in their house and they call the Catholic Church for help, is the church still going to help? Depends on what Catholic Church you call, and you got to remember everybody wants to think the Roman Catholic Church is the only Catholic Church. You know, the Catholic Catholics mean Catholic means universal. So you have the Greek Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox. You have the traditional Catholics, the old Catholics, which I'm an old Catholic. Uh, you have the Roman Catholics. So yeah, yeah, you can. Re- the exorcists don't just pertain to the Roman Catholic Church. You know, that is their that that is the predominant way to go. Um, but there there are other, also the uh, hardest. There, there, the, the, yeah, they're the hardest as well. But the, 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 there are other aspects and branches of Catholicism that people don't understand. So, the Roman Catholic Church might not help you. You should reach out to them, and there are going to be dioceses that might turn turn you away because you got to remember, not all priests believe in demons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun, crazy to sound like, but a lot of, the, the, the way that. Uh, exorcists come across and you know i've i've seen it some priests don't believe that can occur so mm-hmm. that's why you get turned away sometimes um so there's other there's ways there's ways to reach out you know you just have, like i said you have to do your research you know you you can't when someone turns you away you know you just keep trying so um but the roman catholic church are very hard um an old catholic like myself probably will take a fellow christian and help them Roman Catholics might not, you know, but I really think that's also uh, dependent on um, the clergy you're dealing with, too, Um, depending on the priest you're dealing with, uh, uh, the deacon or whoever is working with you. You know, they all they all they all have their they have the, all their free their own free will and their own their own interpretation. So it really depends on who you go, go to, you know, so. Cycle. Yeah, that would be me. I mean, oh. not like me, me, but <laughs> I wish it was me, but it was outside. Luna says persistence is the key. <coughs> you gotta, yeah. I still see Kelly's persistent. mind turning. It is. It is. Go ask, ask away. Well, so take that a step further. So, so what if I come up to you and I say, James, I don't believe in God, but I believe in demons. And I think there's one in my house. That is the most stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. Uh, because how can you believe in demons? If you believe in what a demon is, then you realize God created a demon. So how, if you don't believe in God, how can you believe in a demon? It's like the same thing I always hear. I believe in angels, but I don't believe in God. Uh, what? What? Uh, how how uh, how can you believe in uh, in spirits if you don't believe in something of a higher power? What 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 if, if what comes after death if there's no higher power? God God's just a word. So God is take, just a word. If, if you take God in the theologian aspect, which is the study of God, which is the study of religion, God is life. Every religion, uh, forty two hundred religions that exist out there, I believe, or something like that, crazy. Most of them have a very similar concept of God, even pagans. 
Um, even pagans, even though they believe in many gods and goddesses, there is one center being um, that created all those gods and goddesses. Uh, most Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, who created Zeus and all them. Somebody created Zeus and all them, right? So uh, a lot of a lot of, a lot of religions have that concept of a god or or, or that higher power that's create that created it all. Um, so it's it's very hard. I, 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 I was being mean when I say stupid, but you know it's really hard. It's really hard for me to, to understand if you really take what a demon is and you look at all the lore and all the literature of a demon, and then you don't say you believe in God. Then I think there's something wrong. But I, 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 you can't believe in a demon and an angel and not believe in, in the concept of God. It's hard. It, 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 they, they go in hand in hand. That's why theology carries angelology and demonology. You know. That wasn't. It. I'm. I'm listening. I'm also reading the chat. Right. Um. So yeah. And so, what if somebody doesn't see? Yeah, I'm stuck on that too because it's hard. You you can't you can't yeah. believe you can't believe in an energetic spiritual force and not believe in a higher power. It, but uh, but that's a you, difference than saying that you believe in God. I guess no, that's I guess that was what my point was. So, well, no, so, it's not. God's a high, God's higher power. Regardless God is a you. higher power. But what yeah. if what if okay? So for example, what if a uh, uh, a Buddhist comes to you? They want I mean, to say they're dealing with the demon, though. They there's there's they, they may have a different name for it, right? There's I don't interpretations. know. I just, yeah, there's the, the, every religion has a different interpretation of what a demon is. Like everybody uh, calls that overarching power something yeah, different. Yeah, like uh, like well, they're all uh, demon in a characteristical a character. All right, so every religion has their evil. But every religion has a different characteristic to what their evil interpretation is. But Islam has the jinn. Jinn are elemental forces. They, right. they, they they are non-human, but they are elemental. They're not pure. They're pure. Okay, they're pure energy technically, but they are re- represented as an el- elemental force. Um, uh, Ju- Judaistic belief has the divic, the diviks. Um, you know, Hinduism has the zaras. Right. Um, you know, so on and so on. Um, you know, Bo- Buddhists don't technically believe in. The uh, 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 spirit like that in a weird in a way. So, but they do believe in the uh, the negative mindset. You know, uh, very close to Hinduism with karma. Um, so, but no, yeah, I, I think any any religion has their evil, and so a Buddhist might not necessarily tell me they're they're dealing with a demon. They might, I, uh, but. I, I think they're going to come to me and say, this is what this is. But they all do have their own character, characteristical forms. You know, like I've dealt with the gin case. I wouldn't call it a demon case. But you still will help them. I, I, well, well, the people that are dealing with the gin case weren't Islamic. They were, they were, it, it, they were, it was a Christian individual. I think she's asking if you'll help it, somebody even if they don't believe in God. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you should have just said that. But uh, is that what you were asking overall? Not just him particularly, but I mean, you know, he was saying he was saying if you think you have a problem, the first person you should contact is the Catholic Church, and I guess that started my brain thinking. I would help. I I help anybody. I help agnostic people, atheist people, omnist. I I help whatever you want, whatever you are. If you are, if you are Jewish, if you are Hindu, if you are Islamic. I'll come in as uh, a mediator. I cannot do a cleansing over you. I cannot get the church and do exorcisms over you because guess what? People don't understand. For a cleansing and exorcism and all this stuff to work, you have to believe in in, in what is being said. You know, so you could say, well, well, they don't believe in God, but they believe in more, but God's the same thing. It's the interpretation. You got to you got to believe in what is being said. If you're not, if you don't understand what is being said, it's like reading a book, and you don't understand what you're reading. Are you going to enjoy that book? You know, so it's the same mm-hmm. thing. You have to understand what is uh, being uh, invoked uh, in that situation. If if you don't believe what's being evoked. It's not going to work. Right. You know, your connection to that higher power is not going to happen. I um, wholeheartedly agree with that. That's, <laughs> when I go into a house to help them do a cleansing, um, I'll have them do it. 
I'll walk them through it, but I'll have them do it and have them use their words because it's more powerful for them to be, to say the words themselves that this is my house and you can stay if you mean us no harm, but if you mean us harm, you have to leave. It's, it's so much of stronger of a message coming from them. I, I will in a sense. I, I, I agree to disagree on that. Uh, I agree that they should keep uh, they should keep uh, that focused mind, that positive mind. They should do daily cleansings and, for the rest of their life, especially if you're dealing with demonic possession. You have to you if you if once you break that possession, you have to live a different life for the rest of your life. If you don't, it's going to come back. It's it's, it's happened to people, uh, but. If I if I deal with somebody with a different belief, I'll actually get somebody of a different belief involved to, mm-hmm. to, to take over the case for me. I will I will enable the client to do certain things, but I will never enable the client to do a cleansing in their house because they're very well. I, I've been trained nine years, eight years, and trained every day on how to do cleansings. Uh, I can't show uh, somebody in one day how to do a proper cleansing on their house. There, there, there's, there's thought processes. There's, there's things that have to go through your mind. There's certain things you have to do for a certain reason. People don't go in a room counterclockwise during a cleansing. The, the people don't understand why you do that. You know, you go counterclockwise to reverse everything. You know, people, so there's certain things that you do within a cleansing that's done for a reason, and there's a method to it. So I can't teach a client to do my method in a day so i would never i would never have a client do their own cleansing because most of the times they'll sage their house and that's the worst thing they can do you know Uh. why is it i've never saged anything so but why is it the worst thing they can do well, see, well, okay. So I interpret sage because sage comes more of a pagan from a pagan uh, Native American background, and incense like frankincense, incense, myrrh come from more of a Christian aspect. You know, we every religion technically, uh, in some stands, they use is kind of like an incense form. Um, so basically, what I would tell people, and this is the easiest way of saying it, sage is like an incense, or sage is like laid. So you spray glade when there's a smell, right? And that, gla- that that smell is only going to be neutralized by that glade. It's not going to clean the room. It's just going to denutralize that smell. You still got to clean, but if you don't clean, that smell is going to eventually come back. So sage is like that neutralizer. So when you sage, you're neutralizing that environment. If you're not putting any positivity on top of that, and most times everybody just sages, they, that's all they do. So... You're not doing anything on top of that neutralization. You're only spraying that glade, and that smell is going to go away for a few hours, and then it's eventually going to come back because you never cleansed. You never never did positive thoughts on it. So that's why sage is bad because people improperly don't know how to do it. You know, why? Okay, so if you look at a Christian cleansing or very similar cleansings, especially with paganism or um, other, uh, other religions, Oh boy, um, that was loud. Well, that wasn't um, me. <laughs> very other ritual things. You know, sea salt is used as a barrier. Incense or sage is used as a neutralizer. Holy water and anointing oil are positive reinforcements, and the prayer are the positive words said within that. So each of those things have their own, uh, their own what they do. So it's a, if you just sage, you're not doing any of those other things. It might work for a few hours, might work for a few days, might work for a few months, but uh, but that could also happen with the cleansing. But I've I've seen a lot worse uh, repercussions happen from saging because uh, of them not understanding what sage does in process. You know, when and I think sage, just like go ahead. I was just going to say, and just kind of like you'd said earlier, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree on that one because respectfully, uh, Sage helps. It does. So I know we've got a lot of listeners with a bunch of different beliefs, so I don't want people who who have seen the benefits of it. So Glade um, Glade. Glade helps, gets rid of the smell. (laughs) So, but. Are you guys both talking about all energy or are you guys, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm asking, like, James, are you talking about just... Well, 
Oh, well, no, Sage, if you look at it, it's not, it's not an opinion. If you look at what Sage is by Pagans or what Sage is by anybody, by, by, by its format, why, why Sage is used in a cleansing, it, it, that is why it is used. It is that neutralizer. It is that glade. There's no other reason for it. People, yeah, it could have had positive reinforcement for somebody, but there's been so many more stories that I've dealt with in my my situation that it's been it's done more harm than good because them not understanding why the, the sage is in the process. I I know pagans. I work with pagans. They they'll use sage, but guess what? They'll add they'll add other kinds of uh, woods, other kinds of incense to their bowl, and they'll go around fumi- fumigating the house with that smell. They're not just saging. So it could do good for people, and I hope it does. But if it doesn't help people, there's the reasons why it's not helping people. Sage has a specific reason what it's meant to do. There's no opinion on that. It is sage meant to without do what- intentions, absolutely. Then I would agree that sage without intentions could be somewhat ineffectual. And that's you have what to I have said. your intentions and that's what I with said it the whole time. Yeah, I said- <laughs> yeah. You have to have your intentions, and you have to have your faith with it. Just like anything, you have yeah. to have what you're doing backed by faith. Yeah. And Cynthia was asking the same thing in here. And I think, I think it, she said, uh, but doesn't it depend on how and who is using it? And I think that that kind of got lost in translation that it, I think, if correct me if I'm wrong, you're pretty much just saying you can't use it on its own. That it's a well, multi, yeah. multi. It's a, it, it's a multifaceted thing. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You, if you, it's like I said, if you can't get the glade analogy, then I, I, I guess then I, I've lost you. But, uh, yeah, no, just 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 look at what glade is. Look at what a candle does. Look at what incense does. It gets rid of smells. It's not meant to cleanse things, and that is exactly hey, you, what it's meant. you're saying. You hit a couple of nerves, so I just want to clear this up. Um, you're saying I could, that, that's fine. I can hit nerves. It's the truth. Hey, hey I <laughs> I didn't mean it in a bad way. I just want to. I think I think that. I think it just got lost in there somewhere. Well, yeah, you're saying, no. You're I, saying sage, like... I'm not saying sage I, doesn't work. I'm just saying no. there's, there's processes multi-steps. with the... Yeah, there's multi-steps with the sage. So Every, it yeah. neutralizes it, but then you have to do something to get rid of it for good. Yeah. And Pat's, Pat's analogy that she just put in there is absolutely perfect. It's the same with Catholic incense and holy water. Intention and faith is necessary for anything to work. I said that. So yeah, yeah, that's what we're all. I think that's what we're all yeah. saying. Is yeah. so, you guys are just saying it in different ways. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the same it's thing I said. Here. Yeah, that, that's why but I said there's a process. Said- that's why I said this holy water, sea salt, uh, uh, anointing oil. <laughs> oh guy, oh jeez. Yeah. See, people, people he, want to hear between the lines and not hear the whole thing. You know, that's 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 the that's the problem that we have in this field. We always got to remember to listen to the the whole thing. You know, because uh, you just lose things in translation. You know. Yeah, I agree with that. I think we've talked about that quite a bit on. Yeah, a lot of times this is exactly, and I'm trying. To, I'm not going to name names, but you know. It's exactly what happens What we hear something, but we don't. So somehow our brain stops listening to the rest of it. And it happens. It happens to me a lot, too. You know, you think you yeah. hear one thing, but we're we're listening to defend instead of listening to understand. And, yeah, and I don't have yeah, to not agree only with that. you to like you. I don't have to. I don't have to agree with you to respect you. I have we're to listening for our particular team. words, though, too. And that's yeah. part of the problem is we're listening for certain words to be used. And if different words are being used, then people get all, oh, well, we, we can't possibly agree and get mm. along yeah. because you didn't use the right words. Where yeah. we're all saying the same thing. We're just saying different words. Uh-huh. So, you know, if if this is your belief system and this is what works for you and this is this person's belief system and what works for them, it's all the same thing. Yeah. It's just it's all, the different it's all about love. That, of how it's delivered. Yeah. It, it's not, you know, at the end of the day, for people listening, it's not you doing the work when you go into somebody's house. It's, it's, it's the, it's a higher power working through you. At the end of the day, for you think you're the person that's doing the cleansing and doing all that work, 
then you shouldn't be doing it. it you, you, higher power works through you. That's at the end of the day, it's all that matters. You know, it's like you said, laws of attraction, intention, you know, all those other things. You do what you want to do. If it, there's a process for certain reasons, but you know, yeah, as long as the day, if you're doing good, if you're doing it for the right reasons, that's, that's, that's the first right step, you know? It's the intent behind it. Oh. How so often do we say chat. that? I'm trying to listen to what Kelly. How often do we say that it's the intent behind it? There's it so really so is. so much truth. <laughs> yeah. So much truth to that. Um, I I got lost in the chat a little bit. There was a, there's a couple questions I don't really understand. So, um, here's Mama Pat has one. You said earlier that a demon is tricky and manipulative towards people. Can you tell us from your personal experience some demonic behaviors you have seen yourself? So, oh, sorry. Oh, man. Uh, sorry, I'm, I hate being sick. I get moody, too. So, <laughs> but, uh, so, in, in, the, in the many cases of, uh, in many cases that I've read, I've only, like I said, dealt with five cases. The five cases that I dealt with, um, very similar to what you hear. Um, very theatrical. Uh, they, that when you don't. So, all right, this is hard. Most of the time, they won't. You won't know it's a demon. And even when I'm involved, um, most of the times, um, you know, this talks about it, or there's something negative here. Or we don't understand what's going on here. Um, you know, first time I ever dealt with it. Um, I instantly was very sick. Second time I dealt with that is instantly <laughs> sick. But there's also times within that that you go to those lo- that location with this entity and you won't feel anything. If you have no ability to not, you won't feel anything. You know, um, you know, with the people that are living there when they first started dealing with it, they 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 felt you know, in a, lo- a loving experience, you know, this, the spirit trying to play with them, trying to communicate with them. Um, so they're very manipulative in that stance. They, they, they'll, 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 they'll play to your weaknesses. Um, they'll, they'll have, they'll give you nightmares of what you're scared of. Um, so, and, and, and the best way I can say that, um, a demonic entity was manipulative in my life was before I even got on this case. And I, I talk, I talk about this one uh, a little bit. I was working on this case and never met this family, never seen their house was talking to them in questionnaires, you know, through email and which is how I get a lot of my cases. And, you know, I sent them a questionnaire. So, you know, I knew they had a family. I knew the ages. I knew um, I didn't know the address technically, um, but I never like Google uh, Google mapped it or whatever. You can zoom in like a creeper or something like that, but never did any of that. So I just had basic information. Um, this is what they were dealing with. We're experiencing this, blah blah blah. And so within that same week of um, going to that location, I had a very, very, very bad nightmare. And the nightmare <laughs> was me going into this house. I seen the house, seen the family, and I walked in and I killed every single one of them. Every single one of them. I killed every single one of them. You just got my attention. So, of course, I, I woke up in, in shock and sweat. I went to that freaking house. That house was the same house as my nightmare. And every single family member looked every like spinning image to what my nightmare. And the only reason I could say I can remember that house and I remember those faces because it, it was it was such a provo- you know I'm killing these people. It was it was that provo- it was that very it was that bad of a nightmare. And I got to this location. I seen this house. And I was like, Am I going to kill these people? And like self doubt for a second, but. And then I walked in. And I seen all their faces. I was like, I, I like I, you know, you 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 turn pale white, and you're like, oh man, and like, but you know, you have to recover because you know if this is really what you're dealing with, 
you know, you know, you have to be on your A game. But that's that's a little story I can give you with how how demonic entity this can be uh, in the manipulative state. I I don't know if that nightmare was to keep me away or you know scare me. Uh, I think it was a scare tactic. You know, keep away. You know, we we know you're involved. You know, they're they're all knowing entities. You know, they're way older than we are. You know. But yeah, that was it. Was definitely definitely frightening and eye opening. I I can only imagine. It's like an yeah. evil version of deja vu that you need to stop before. Oh yeah, definitely. I, Precognition. I, I, oh yeah. <laughs> Precognition. Um, yeah. That'd be scary though. Oh, it was pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty frightful. Does that happen? Is that the only time that's happened? Luna wants to know: Has it happened a lot or? Is that uh, only time? It's only happened that time that happened to me, but it has happened to, uh, um, in, in nightmare format it has happened to other, uh, fellow demonologists that I, uh, I've worked with or per- fellow other paranormal investigators that do this kind of line of work. Yeah. Um, can nasty human spirits do that stuff too? Can they manipulate? Um, I think an attachment when they are, uh, kind of influ- influencing or infused with your energy a little bit like latched on to you i think there can be certain things um um kind of brought into like either a dream or a nightmare so i think it's possible you think about um if you if you really want to talk about that and um you look at people that like get a liver or a heart or a transplant and, you know, they start picking up traits of that person or start having dreams of somebody else's life. And there's been very big research on this and mm-hmm. a lot of stories on this. So if 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 there is a spirit that is infused in your energy attached to you, why can't you have dreams and nightmares very similar to what maybe they experience or what they want to influence on to you, you know, kind of like projecting. So I th- yeah, project to you. So I think it's possible. I've never experienced it. So that's a, it's a possibility. There's stories about it. There's that theories, ideas. You know, I know fellow people that, you know, feel like they've been, uh, have had uh, things projected to them uh, during their attachments. So. Um, Luna has it's another spirit. question. Uh, can an attach, can an attachment possess a person? No, um, not in that same format as like demonic possession. Um, attachment can uh, control uh, for a certain. Uh, well, yeah. the word possess ain't technically wrong. I don't like using the word possession when it comes to attachments. I, I've dealt with attachments where the spirit was able to communicate through the person. Usually, the best way to uh, very uh, the best way to um, Many people kind of uh, uh, understand it is when a, a trance medium goes in a trance and spirit talks to that medium. How do you feel Just, about mediums and psychics? Uh, I work with them. I, I think there. I think there's there's some um, baloney ones out there, but I've I've I work with uh, very gifted people that I break on cases with me. I, I like to check all the boxes off. So if 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 I worked with this person and they've had some tremendous results and things that were mind blowing, why not attempt to use their abilities and see what they get from a situation? So I'm, I'm all right for it. I think that it is dangerous. I'm glad, you know, I tried never, never to develop anything or, or don't associate myself. I think it's very dangerous because, you know, sometimes, you know, you hear the, uh, the argument, Oh, we know who we're talking to, you know, my guides tell me, but you know, do you really, so, but that, I guess that's the debate that people always want to have and that's, but I stay neutral to it. You know, I'm not a psychic or medium or clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient. I'm not an empath or anything like that. I don't title myself any of that stuff, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. That was pretty precognitive of you to have seen people's faces ahead of time. Or it could have been it, it, it influenced, but, uh, but, <laughs> uh, but the thing is, though, is I, I'm not against it. I just uh, I think it's dangerous. I think people should, uh, you know, definitely be cautious of who they uh, uh, go to, uh, you know, make sure, you know, it's the same thing. 
who going right to the right demonologist, going to the right psychic medium. You know, you can get do your research. Yeah, you know, do, do your, your research. research. Same but, paranormal investigators, psychics, mediums, demonologists, people in general. Yeah, priests, people priests, in general. It's do all your research. Thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely priests nowadays, especially with what's going on in the church. Definitely, because I've met some really nice ones, and I've met some doozies. Oh yeah, that everybody thinks a priest is nice, nice people. I, I've yeah, met some no. evil ones. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've I've known some. I grew up Roman Catholic. I know some <laughs> very nice priests. I've known some nasty priests. I but I've known some nasty women. I've known some nice women. Yeah, I've exactly. Known some good cops. I've known some bad cops. That you know. Do, yeah, do your research. People. You know, do your research. Yeah. Just, you know, I say that about everything. I have so like, many questions, man. I think I'm kind of keeping up. So I think the next one is um, oh, Roland. Roland had asked, is there a way to tell the difference between a demon versus psychosis? Sorry. I for a demonologist or for a normal person? Can yes. You please. Can you please reiterate that question? Sorry. Is is there a way to tell the difference between a demon and what's just psychosis? Basically, uh, what are they making up? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's called uh, get a psychologist involved. Uh, and I'm just sorry. Let me just. I'm gonna blow my nose quickly. Go ahead. <laughs> We've done works on the show. Trust me. Oh yeah. Um. So that's actually a really good question. Uh, I'm not a psychologist. I don't have a PhD or master's degree in psychology. Um, but one of the things that, of course, the church, uh, and we were talking about primary care physicians and uh, psychologists earlier, uh, very shortly. Um, one of the things the Catholic Church requests, especially if somebody's possessed uh, or claiming to be possessed, is to cost the uh, data. But they require a primary care physician visit just to make sure everything physically is right with them. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, they're not, you know, they don't have uh, <clears throat> a fungus, a uh, uh, fungus thing going on or anything like that. And uh, go see, you know, get an evaluation done by a psychologist. And usually, when you get evaluation, you know, at most places, um, you'll you'll be you'll see you'll be seen like th- by the three different psychologists, and, and those three psychologists will talk and just to see if they, they, they determine if they have any disorders within the DSM five. Um, so, I know the DSM five a little bit. I've worked with quite a few psychologists. My girlfriend's uh, a, a psychologist, um, so I'm around it. I kind of know some red flags, but that is the biggest. That is the biggest challenge on understanding if they truly are possessed or if they are dealing with the psychosis issue. Um, but anytime somebody claims they're possessed, you should always have them go seek a doctor because uh, it's something just, uh, to make sure. just to make sure. And uh, on top of it, too, you know, they could have psychosis issues and still be possessed. It could be because of those issues that they could be influenced by a spirit. Yeah. So there's, there's so many different factors, you know, because you, you're dealing with a crazy person doesn't mean that you're really not dealing with something paranormal either, you know, but it, it's a lot harder to unravel. It's a lot more dangerous if, if, if you're a paranormal investigator, like with me, you know, I'm clergy, you know, I, I work, I've worked around it. I'm not better than anybody, but if you're a regular investigator, Joe Schmo, you, you know, you, you, you get somebody else involved, you know, or don't deal with that at all. Because if you if you say go to a psychologist and they really do have psychological issues, but you really do believe they're dealing with something, um, and you have that data, definitely, like I said, reach out to or get more people in your boat because you cross that road. If that evaluation does say something that they have a disorder, um, you know. You, 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 you can also be in dangerous hands because you say something wrong and they commit suicide or something like that. It's on you now, you know, that, it, that, that blood is on your hands. So you always got to be careful. So the next question we had was, um, <coughs> do they, and I'm assuming by they mean demons really cause swarms of flies to appear? Can they make people have wounds, vomit, talk in other languages, etc.? So in other words, does it ever really happen that the things that happened in the exorcist actually happen to people who are possessed by a demon? 
quick and simple answer. I think this would be the most simple answer I've ever said all. Yeah. Yes, it, it could happen. I don't know. The head, spin, the head spinning. No, I've never seen that. And there's been no, uh, uh, no, no aspect of that. But <laughs> You think it's but, common? Uh, think it's in, in the, fly, the, the, the flies are a little bit more common than the puking. Usually the puking is like uh, usually when the expulsion of the entity, the, the puking happens more so or uh, if uh, like a, success, a successful deliverance or exorcism. Um, but the flies, yes, and some of the things, uh, the speaking in tongues, you know, of course that's misinterpreted, you know, speaking tongues mean, you know, always meant, speaking tongues always meant basically speaking in a language you don't understand. It doesn't mean like you're speaking like this, ah, like blah, 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 you know, like, <laughs> That's not speaking like, in tongues? <laughs> no, so, you know, everybody thinks that, like, that speaking tongues is that, but speaking tongues is... You know, speaking in a language that you've never understood before. So, but yeah, so, you know, there's some languages that are common and there's some languages that aren't. You know, a lot of people want to say Latin, but it's easy to pick up Rosetta Stone and learn Latin. Um, so you always got to be wary about that. Um, so there's, 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 there's certain things that you got to look out for. But yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of those movies that, I see, uh, that you see on The Exorcist, The Right. Uh, Emily Rose. Now, a lot of all those were based on true stories, so th- there there are some truths to uh, what what happened in those cases and some of the things they experienced that were within the movie. But, but of course, a lot of it is also entertainment too. I, I Latin and easy should not be in the same sentence. Just well, it should. Uh, well, <laughs> well, it's, uh, well, well, it's not. I get e- what you're saying. It's no, not I get easy, saying, but, but it's <laughs> but it, within this day, within this day and age, it's easy. It's easy for people to uh, knowledge is uh, out there to learn to learn it. You know, yeah. back in the day, you'd have to go to the library and stuff like that, or you know, and stuff like that. Now, now it's so accessible. But there are other languages. Like there was one time I had to get a professor involved, and uh, it was a professor on uh, Sumer- Sum- Sumerian. You know, this, that language, and that's you can't. It's not. It's not something you can go find on Google on how to learn the Sumerian language. So and speak it. So we had to get a professor involved to help right. us uh, decipher it because you know there <coughs> there's languages out there I don't understand and and the best thing that you can do when you don't understand something is reach out to people that might understand it. You know. I don't understand English half the time, so I don't either. <laughs> I say car. I, don't understand I say car. slang. I should say. I don't understand. I say slang. car and ballpark. I don't know English at all. Yeah. What I, was the second word? Ballpark. I don't know what. Okay. Ballpark. Oh, I'm like I don't even know what you're saying. It's kind of like it's kind of like the bo- It's kind of like the Boston and New York Boston. New York accent. Yeah, I really say. <laughs> I got told I had an accent yesterday on the phone because I they said I said house funny. Anyways. We'll keep going. Totally side no, squirrel. That's okay. Hey, we got an hour and 18 minutes in before we got distracted. Side totally squirreled off. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. So the next question. Are there levels of demons? For example, succubus, incubus, major, minor demons, legions, etc. And is there a difference between a demon and the devil? Only uh-huh. Roland could ask a question. Like I that. love Roland. Is, is there a difference between a demon and a devil? I love well, Roland, that's-, that's why I can make fun of him. That is that is a very in depth question. Yeah. Um, te- technically, there's different levels, but technically, um, everybody wants to say a succubi and incubi are like a female, male demons. Remember, we talked about demons don't have any physical physical characteristics; they're pure spirit. So, if that if you take that, that means there's no female, male, pure spirit. Um, they 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 could be anything they want to be. Um, they do have intelligence though. So, um, an incubi, of course, <coughs> is a male and a succubi is, um, a, a, a female, you know, a target, uh, target of, uh, of a, fe- um, male incubi targets <coughs> females and a succubi target targets males, but they are, they're still the same, uh, still a demonic entity. 
Um, they are stronger. They are said to be stronger demonic entities and lesser demonic entities. Usually, in most demonic hauntings, there are multiple entities and not just one. There are like lessers with the the, the higher or stronger entity. Uh, most times, they're called minions. Um, but how strong they are and severity, I don't really know. They're they're much older. Uh, the difference between a demon and a devil. That's a good one, but the, everybody wants to say there's a difference technically, but in, in reality, there isn't. Um, you know, you could say Satan is the devil or Lucifer is the devil, but I would I would say that you know I I would say that there's a lot of debate on it. There's a lot of discussion about it. like okay, you could maybe say a fallen angel is a, a devil, um, or they are a fallen angel. Because a lot of people want to say a fallen angel. Demons aren't just fallen angels. They are other pure pure evil spirits. So it's really up to interpretation on how you interpret it. Um, there's so many different literature formats of demonology. So it's a very interesting question. You know, you got to remember if you really want to acquaint and go back to the one thing that we can talk to um, that is based upon Christianity is the Bible. And yeah, in, re- in reality, they don't really talk about demons and devil and, 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 and as much until the New Testament. You know, they talk about the serpent in the Old Testament, which is, of course, we all, we all know who the serpent is. So it's really hard to say um, if there's any big difference between the devil and a demon. I feel like I've dealt with demonic entities, um, and you, I guess you could call them devils. So I, it's a really hard question to answer in, in, in five minutes or something like that. So. But that was definitely a good question. He always has he always has questions that I get confused reading sometimes. <laughs> they're good, but I just I'm like my head starts spinning yeah. when I'm on the second sentence. Okay, lot, guys, I, any last questions? Get them in here. We got about ten minutes left. Um, so any last minute questions? Start typing now. Go on, sorry, <laughs> to interrupt you. No, I'm saying no, I'm saying everybody. Like I said, everybody has a different opinion. You know, some people say devil's different. You doing okay? I'm all, I'm all right. I I feel ya. I got you know I I haven't I should have got a bottle of water, but I'm I'm all right. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're all right. I get I get the when I get sick, I get the man flu, so it's all right. I understand that one. <laughs> I'll probably start crying after this and. Tuck myself in sleep. Curl up and into a little feet ball. Of ball and- <laughs> Can an angel... Roland has another question. Can an angel possess a person and could they be banished? Who could be banished? Can an angel be banished? Can an yeah. angel possess a person and could they be banished? Well, yeah. An angel can technically possess somebody. Um, I've seen it, actually, once. It was very crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's all I can say about that. Just kidding. Uh, all I can say about that story, but no, I definitely, I believe angels, you, if, if you really wanted to roll back to the question, if demons are fallen angels and if demons can possess people, then yes, an angel definitely can possess somebody, but it ain't going to be in a negative circumstance. It's going to be, um, in, in a positive manner. Um, can they be, can angels be banished? Uh, it probably, uh, yeah. you got to remember when you banish uh, a demonic force from a location, it's the invocation, it's the power of God working through you. So I don't think God is going to work through you to banish uh, an angel. An angel. Um, now, if you banished an angel in negative means and through the power of evil or something like that, maybe that's possible. But I want to know, I don't play around with that shit. But if it's an angel and you ask nicely for it to leave, it ought to leave because they're angels and they're they're good. Well, yeah, but that's not banishing an angel though. Banishing's like like get the hell out of my house. Like, and like you know, but, there is like, not enough room in here for both of us. Leave. Yeah, but but yeah, definitely. I, I definitely, yeah, if you I, in most cases, I think in, in stories of people that have been visited by angels, I think if they've if they told the angel, please leave. The angel has been very uh, sincere and has uh, followed their request. So. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's a, that's actually that's actually a really good question. 
can angels possess, Tom, huh? He always has. He has great questions. So, <laughs> Cynthia's comment cracked me up. Sorry. So in so other words, other you're words, stuck, stuck with, with it. it. <laughs> did, I, did I sleep with the angel? Is that what she said? No, no. she said. So in other words, uh, you're stu- if, they, if, if you can't, if you can't manage manage it, it, then uh, you're stuck with you it. Sleep, uh, oh, yeah, you're stuck with it. Oh, no, not sleep with. Yeah, stuck with. Uh. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeez. <laughs> Can all right, Roland. Roland has another question. Can an angel do harm by accident? Uh, I don't think an angel would. So, I think they're too uh, too too intelligent to cause harm uh, mistakenly. We we I think we try to interpret these beings too much in a human standpoint. So, I think they're a hell of a lot more intelligent than we we tend to believe, um, and. No, I don't think they make mistakes. Nicely so. Okay, so before James starts curling up in a ball and crying, <laughs> um, thank you for putting up with us. Um, <laughs> it was a fantastic. It was a fantastic time. <laughs> you wanna? Blah, blah, I can't even talk. Would you like to throw out where people can find you and where you're gonna be coming up soon? Um, as far as the places I'm going to be, I have no idea. I've, I went fully crazy this year on locations. Uh, well, I didn't go fully crazy. I should say, I guess, I guess it was a mutual interest, but I'll definitely, I'll be in Michigan in August. Um, Illinois in September, a few, uh, quite a few other places. You'll be um, at the com- main Paracon, the Portland Paracon yeah. June 1st. Yes, that's true. June 1st. Yeah, Maine. I can't that's wait. That's the only I one. I, I'm going to be there. That's the only reason why I know you're going to be there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you got, uh, <laughs> anybody can reach me on Facebook. You know, uh, I, I have a lot of open friend slots. So, you know, send them James Nito, A-N-N-I-T-T-O. Um, you can also go to James, jamesnito.com. Um, I haven't updated in a long time, but there's a means of contacting me or, um, sometimes I post like books that I like and you can go check them out and you know, go read some of the books that are, uh, have been influential, influential in my life. So, yeah, those are the two biggest uh, places. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's crazy. Everybody, uh, you know, as, as far, as long as, you know, you don't do it in a negative standpoint, but you know, my phone's always out there. Four zero one eight zero eight seven four one six. Give me a call if you ever need to talk. You are um, a brave soul. Uh, mm-hmm. I well, it's called block for a reason, you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, yeah, I think, you know, so those are the ways to contact me. So if anybody, please don't call, please don't call me at ridiculous amounts of time at night because I will not answer. Um, but yeah, definitely. That's the ways to get in contact with me. And I, I have plenty of events coming up. So um, they're, they're posting on my Facebook post, on my Facebook wall. <laughs> Wolf says to drink some green tea with a Hall's menthol cough drop in it. It would be, I, I wish I had that. Could, I, this Grubhub, does Grubhub uh, deliver uh, pharmaceutical needs? If nah. not, you might have just came up with the next million million dollar idea. Right. Yeah. CVS Go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, you guys hold on a second. Um, oh, wait. Before, I'm telling you, I'm tired. Um, there is no show this week. Sunday, mo- uh, what is today? It's, oh, my God, today's Friday. Today There's Friday. no show Saturday, Sunday, or Monday this week due to the holiday. The next show is Tuesday. Um, into the Pit, there will be a panel of mediums and paranormal investigators, um, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. Um and I think that's it. Kelly, is that my is that my job? Did I finish I everything? So. I think I am so tired. My daughter <laughs> not only she got to Germany at midnight and got to France at five, so I had to be up both times to talk to her to make sure she landed. But then I couldn't go back to sleep right away each time. So and now she's six hours ahead, so she's gonna be as when I'm going to bed, she's going to be getting up and messaging me. So it's a good thing there's no shows this weekend. 
be crazy. Rest weekend. Rest weekend. Yes. Um, yes. So our show next week, next Friday. Next. Do we have a show next, next Friday. Oh yes. no. Yes. Yeah. I. You're not going to be here, but yes. Um, Ra- uh, Raven Rose, Roland, and Cynthia will um be here from location. Ah, uh, they won't be here. They'll be on air with me from their um, location. So that should be fun. Um, and I have no idea what's happening in May because I don't even know what's happening tomorrow. So yeah, who knows? Yes. We'll, right. One day at a time. One day at yes. a time. One day at a time. I do know I will be on Girls vs. Ghost Media with my favorite host ever, Miss um, Kelly McCarville, May first. That's coming up. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. So that's gonna be fun. Oh yeah. I'm gonna schedule this like four hours because God knows how long we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, James, again, thank you. Hold on one second. Everybody, Definitely. we will see you next Friday. Did you want Have a happy Easter. I guess happy we didn't do shout-outs. Did you want shout-outs? Oh, outs? shit, shit. I yeah. know. I just was totally spacing on that. I failed on my job, Shay. Yes, I'll do them real quick. Sorry, James. I am, right. I am actually <laughs> lucky to be awake. We have Wolf, Adam, Mama Pat, Miss Luna, Roland, Cynthia, uh, ha, ha, uh, Kim, Matt, uh, uh, Jen B. I think I saw her in there. Actually, I saw someone say hi to her. Darren, um, A's in there. I behold her. Muna, Darren. Um, I'm gonna miss some because I can't scroll all the way back. I scrolled down to the bottom. I started yeah. at the bottom. Um, anybody else we might have got in the beginning? And if you did, you say Wolf. We'll say Wolf again because yes. he deserves a double shout out. Yes, Wolf, of course. Um, so thank you everybody and thank you for tolerating my sleepy ass tonight good night happy Easter thanks for listening everybody Thank you for listening, and for all things Paranormal Buzz Radio related, check out our website at paranormalbuzzradio.com. Like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram.